AMD FSR. This will undoubtedly be the biggest announcement for AMD to be discussed, well, really all of June, and that's no surprise. However, I'm not going to talk too much about what I think about how it will perform against DLSS, except that I think for the performance per image quality you get, it will be very competitive. Outside of that, I would just recommend you click the link in the description to AMD's keynote presentation where they show early details and wait for third-party benchmarks from Gamers Nexus and Hardware on Box that I confirm should come out around the official launch on June 22nd. Now, today I want to talk about something that I suspect a lot of people might miss. And it's actually something I talked about at the end of my Zen 4 leak because I just I couldn't wait to talk about it. But, but I'm worried some people miss that. And that's the overall strategy. From where I'm sitting, AMD has intentionally taken NVIDIA completely off guard and is building a game plan that I'm finding it hard to imagine NVIDIA will be able to combat easily. I think NVIDIA really thought that, and they've said publicly in interviews, I believe, that they are hard to compete with, basically, that only they can make the best software, and that, well, based on these statements and their arrogance, that AMD wasn't going to make anything remotely competitive with DLSS 2.0 or better for a long time, and that they could take their time slowly rolling out the latest quality of DLSS into the games they can take their time putting it into. I don't think they thought that AMD would just have something right away with a lot of support, which is what it seems heavily like AMD will have here. A launch that's coming sooner than expected. Again, listen to Scott Herkelman here talk about how it almost, I mean, at least when you listen to this. Um, we still have some work ahead of us. Uh, it's probably one of the biggest uh, software initiatives we have internally um, because we know how important it is that if you want to turn on ray tracing that you want to you don't want to just have that that competitive hit uh, or that your GPU get uh, hit so hard and so you know the, the FSR what we call it, the acronym Fidelity uh, FX super resolution is something key to us to launch this year but it's it's going to take a little bit more time we're we're, we're progressing well but um, we still have some work to do I don't know. Am I, am I the only one that thinks Scott was making it sound like this wouldn't be ready until the end of the year? I think AMD was playing into NVIDIA's arrogance, marshalling resources with developers behind the scenes and preparing something that, well, let's just put it this way. Every single developer I've talked to and people I know and trust have talked to say that FSR is far easier to implement than DLSS. And that the fact that it will be supported on consoles, Xbox, PlayStation, and gaming PCs, and potentially even on Intel Z, and if Jensen eventually accepts it, NVIDIA, makes them go, DLSS, it really isn't worth our effort. Look, if a they basically feel like if NVIDIA wants to put in all of the effort themselves and add it to the game themselves, they'll let NVIDIA. But that when it comes to putting in the legwork, FSR is what excites them. And... Um, the reason it excites them is, again, something that I can't be underemphasized, and that's that AMD is focusing on the correct market with their upsampling tech. Let me explain. When DLSS first came out, it felt like NVIDIA was, I don't know, basically bragging that if you're already a 4K gamer, now you can get 20% extra frame rates in 4K. It was widely found that DLSS, especially in the 1.0 version, really didn't make 1080p look any better. It looked worse, and it kind of made 1440p worse. The way they train DLSS, they need a ton of pixels to get a more accurate you know, smoothing of the image to get that performance boost without losing image quality. I just feel like the better way to go about this would be to build a technology that makes it so weaker hardware gets far greater performance boosts than otherwise possible at lower resolutions. 4K gamers, you know, with 3090s are not the market that needs to be addressed, at least not according to developers. What developers would prefer is if one of these GPU vendors, Intel soon, AMD and NVIDIA, would focus on making sure that they can scale down the graphics to weaker hardware. That's what AMD's game plan is with FSR. I mean, it is very impressive that DLSS can make 
4K images look even better than native 4K sometimes with a small, relatively speaking to, I believe what FSR will do, performance boost. But, you know, making it so that it's not so much about making it look a little better on the highest end hardware, but not lose much image quality while doubling, tripling frame rates that's what developers really want. Developers really want to be able to make a game that they can ensure works on APUs, like AMD's APUs, like Intel's integrated graphics, without looking like complete garbage. I mean, looking at DLSS work at super low resolutions is fun academically, but no one wants to play a game like that. What they want is to have the game look at least as good or better than 720p while having reasonable frame rates, you know, 60 FPS or better. That's AMD's game plan. AMD's game plan is to bring out something that's easier to implement, that's widely accepted on all hardware, APUs, graphics cards, gaming consoles, and then to make it so that it benefits everyone, not just the people already running at the highest resolutions. That's a big deal. And in fact, something I said in that Zen 4 leak that is an even bigger deal, something that I was tipped off to by a source, is that there is evidence RDNA 3 is being built to accelerate FSR better than their existing hardware will. Now, do you see why this is such a big deal, right? RDNA 3 can come out after FSR is already becoming widely accepted, again, on consoles, on laptop APUs, on dedicated graphics cards, where developers want to support it well, and AMD can say, it works on everything. There's no reason to use DLSS. And you know what? Our new line of graphics cards just so happen to accelerate it far better than the competition. The standard, the thing most people use, we run it best. Sure, NVIDIA has DLSS and it has its own benefits. But what are most people using? Most people are using what we will accelerate the best. They get a head start because they help design FSR, even if it's an open source, or should I say open standard. This is a very shrewd move by Lisa, by AMD. This is something that tells me that, my God, was the 6900 XT not enough for you, NVIDIA? You've got to stop underestimating AMD, and I don't think they will after this. I suspect, behind the scenes, they are really worried about what they're going to have to do. Because it takes a lot more work, as far as I'm told, to get DLSS working well. It took them years to make DLSS anything worth talking about. It's going to take a lot more work per game optimizing to compete with FSR if devs are happier, much more happy to actually work on FSR themselves versus DLSS. And basically, the only thing NVIDIA can do is play ball early and try to get in on FSR and almost hijack it like they did FreeSync with their latest G-Sync initiatives, or just spend way more money than AMD making DLSS supported just as much. But the money is going to have to come from them. AMD is going down the path of least resistance, as usual. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. This was something I have been talking about, but I want to make sure it is pointedly understood and heard by as many people as possible because this, for me, is the most exciting part of FSR. And I suspect a lot of people will just get stuck on talking about the frame rates and image quality. I mean, the fact that AMD may just be able to have the default better supported on them long term in every game is a much bigger deal. And the fact that they're going to focus their technology on accelerating low end and mid range and high end hardware, not just focusing on making higher resolutions that already look good, look better. That's that's genius. That's genius, AMD. Anyways, please remember to like the video and share it if you enjoyed it. That really helps the channel so much. And then subscribe to Moore's Law is Dead to not miss all of the coverage coming out, including a new Broken Sailcon with Jared's Tech, where we talk about the Computex presentations and what we think about the current state of the laptop market. Look out for that Broken Sailcon. And of course, if you have the extra money, consider supporting us on Patreon for early ad-free access and exclusive content patrons only get, including access eh, including, ah, access to a Discord where you can ask me and the guests like Jared questions. All right, and then as always, thank you for watching.